my God, so peachy. I'm so excited. Hey everyone, my name is Sasha and I'm a fitness instructor, baker, and a nutritionist based in Brooklyn, New York City. Peach season is upon us, so today we're gonna do a fun iteration of peach cobbler that's vegan and gluten-free. We'll begin with the peach filling, which starts at the stove top, and we'll just combine our peaches with a little bit of water and some sugar and cinnamon. I'm gonna heat my pot over a high flame and then reduce it down to medium low. And metal conducts heat, so you don't need to keep it over the flame for too long just to warm it up. You can start pouring things in right away. Looks like I have a little too many peaches in the bowl, so you're looking for about four cups here. And then this is just a half a cup of water. Right, and then we'll top it off with a little bit of coconut sugar and some cinnamon. So you'll wanna stir all of your ingredients until your peaches are evenly coated with the water and the sugar. Once the sugar starts to dissolve into the water, it will form a really thick and sweet liquid, almost like a syrup. And then you'll let that come to a boil. And once that happens, we'll turn the heat down and we'll let it simmer for 10 minutes. In the meantime, I'm melting my vegan butter over another low flame, and we can start to combine our dry ingredients into another mixing bowl while we're waiting for the peaches to boil. So first we'll put our dry ingredients into a larger mixing bowl. This is just a combination of gluten-free flour, some oats, sugar, baking powder, and cinnamon. Adding three quarters of a cup of almond milk, but really any dairy alternative that you have on hand will work, even coconut milk. And then just a splash of maple syrup. Once you've got that all in, I'm gonna use a spatula to just combine it. You don't wanna really over mix because you're just making a nice thick batter here. Once your dry ingredients are fully submerged into the milk and the maple syrup, it should feel not like a dough, but again, like a batter. And if you need just a little bit more liquid, feel free to add a splash or two in. So while we're waiting for the peaches to reach their boil, the butter is melting and your cobbler cake batter has been mixed. We can go ahead and spray our baking dish. And then we're actually gonna pour almost all of our melted butter into the dish directly. And then we follow that up with the cake batter. And then we follow the cake batter up with our peach filling. So just enough to fill the bottom of the dish. And then I'm gonna reserve just a tiny bit. Great. My peaches are starting to boil. You can't hear it, but I can. There's a rolling boil and it's bubbling all over the place and it smells fantastic. So once that starts to happen, that's when I can turn my flame down to a simmer. Look at my watch, 10 minute timer. And in the meantime, make sure that your oven is set to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. What we're gonna do now is pour this really thick cake batter right into the melted butter into your baking dish. And you're not gonna wanna mix it, honestly. This like separation of fat and matter is kind of what you want. You wanna get these pockets of like a ton of butter and then you wanna get some pockets of your your cake, like the little fluffy cake bits. So I'm just kind of pressing them into the spaces that don't have anything in it and then I'm not mixing. Okay, it's kind of heavy. So you're gonna need to use a little bit of elbow grease and some forearm strength because essentially you want to control the placement of your peaches on top of the cobbler and then you'll pour the syrup on top of that. Oh my God, so peachy. 
I'm so excited. Once it bakes, the cake batter will start to rise to the top and you'll see less peaches. All right, my little peaches. Once all your little peaches have been scooped out, switch to the strong arm because this is gonna take a little bit of forearm strength and then just gently drizzle the syrup on top. Yeah. Bam. Looks good, huh? So we're topping with coconut sugar and the last bit of melted butter so that every bite has ooey gooey peachy goodness in it. You don't have to use all the coconut sugar, but you kind of have to use all the coconut sugar. Now it goes into the oven for 15 minutes at 325. We'll rotate it one time, put it in for another 15 minutes, and then we'll take it out to cool. Yum, look at her. I'm really excited to eat this. Um, so just a word to the wise, I would definitely let her cool at least 15 minutes before you cut into it because you want everything to kind of mold together. Um, this will hold really well in the refrigerator for a few days. So if you are more disciplined than I am and plan to eat it over the span of a couple days and not just in one sitting, you can store it in the refrigerator. Let's dive in. Yeah, see how like all the layers are pretty pronounced here? That's exactly what you want and that will only be accomplished by patience and cooling time. Okay. If you had um, some Greek yogurt or some vanilla ice cream, I would totally put that on top. And it would make a really great complement to this. Okay. I'm gonna go right for the center. It's like ooey, it's cakey, it's peachy. Mm. And it's so good. The butter during the baking process, even though it was on the bottom layer, starts to work its way up and really incorporates well into the cake and the peaches. If you want the recipe in full, you can find it in the description below. And if you want more dessert recipes that can double as a nutritious breakfast recipe, please subscribe to Well and Good. See you later.